Thanks again, everyone, for coming to another ACF Chat Fridays, or if this is your first one, welcome. We are doing this every two weeks. It's the ACF team. It's our open office hours, although it's only 45 minutes. Um, yeah, we do it every other Friday. We do record the sessions. We are recording. We'll put it on YouTube, and we'll put a, uh, a post up on the website um, so you can catch up if you don't come to sessions uh every time so that's the, that's the link where we normally post we are joined um by some of the acf team we've got liam and matt uh, some of the engineers and uh, mike from the content team and i am ian paulson the product manager this session we uh we actually have a special guest which is good so we're, we're stopping the run of just uh open q a sessions we've got jason Ball here jason is i just do a quick intro and then i'll pretty much get started but he is a principal software engineer at WP Engine, so he works alongside us, and he is the creator and maintainer of WP GraphQL, which is a free open source WordPress plugin, um, and it adds an extendable GraphQL API to any WordPress site, because I read his Twitter bio or his LinkedIn, but I'll let him do a lot more of the explaining. Um, we we can run, or we'll have the Q&A in Zoom going, so if throughout the session, when while well, Jason's um, given us all the info about WP GraphQL and ACF together. You've got any questions, please drop them in the Q&A, or if you haven't got the Q&A function on Zoom, drop them in the chat, and we'll try and get uh, Jason or the team to answer them a bit later on in the session, maybe. Um, so, yeah, let's let's get started. Over to you, Jason. Thanks for coming. Sweet. Thanks for having me. Um, oh, keep, oh, shoot. I'm not actually in as a host, so I can't. Let's, let's, like yeah, let's make you a co-host quickly. Uh, where are we? Oh, you fixed uh, that, Liam. Cool. Nice. Okay. Yep. We're good now. All right. I'm. I'll uh, share my screen. I'm going to talk through a lot of uh, stuff uh, fairly visually um, and demonstrate stuff as I go. Um, so the yeah the the kind of rough outline. We can get off track if folks have questions or whatever. But the rough outline. I'm trying to cover i'm going to introduce y'all to what graphql is in the first place what you know especially in wordpress what wp graphql is and then we're going to look at how we can use acf to create field groups and expose those field groups to the graphql schema and get data from acf uh, using graphql then we'll look at features like acf post types and taxonomies how to use that with graphql um, and then we're going to actually look at the support for acf extended We'll create things like options pages. Well, you can do options pages with ACF, uh, but then we'll also create block types with ACF extended and add field groups to that and take a look at how this uh, works with GraphQL. And if we have time, we'll try and hit up uh, clone fields and some more advanced cases like that. So we'll see what I can do in 45 minutes. Uh, so what, I, what I'm showing here is just a plain WordPress install. I have nothing active. No, uh, It's just like the regular uh, WordPress, whatever, 2023 theme, and I have zero plugins active right now. So to introduce you first to uh, GraphQL, uh, I'm going to activate the plugin WP GraphQL. So I have it installed. I'm going to activate it. What this plugin does, it, it gives us uh, what's called an IDE, graphical IDE. So this is a environment where we can explore the GraphQL schema and test uh, operations. And so to understand what GraphQL is, I like to show it uh, rather than just talk about it. So GraphQL is a, it stands for graph query language. So it's a new way to interact with a source of data. In our case, the source of data is WordPress. Uh, and so at GraphQL provides what's called a schema and we can use this tool to explore the schema. And then we can write queries to get data out of WordPress. So at the heart of a GraphQL schema, we have two, two entry points into the graph. One is called a query, one is called a mutation. And we can click in here to see what's all available for us. So if we click into query, we can see a lot of fields available. If you're familiar with WordPress, one of the most common things you're probably aware of is posts. And so I can either browse the documents over here, I can open up this query composer and click things over here, or I can just start typing. So like if I click this, it will start generating a query for me. I personally prefer to just type, so I'm just gonna type, but I can query for posts. If I command click here, it'll show us what's available to be queried on those fields. And so a list of posts has nodes. Individual nodes are gonna be objects in the graph. 
And then I can query for the fields. So I can command click that and we can see what fields posts have. And if you're familiar with WordPress, you know, posts have authors, they have things like categories, they have things like comments, uh, they have content, title, all that stuff. So we're going to look at a quick example of what it might look like to query some posts. So we can query post ID, title, date. And then we can actually do nested connections to all uh, other resources like author. And then we can get the author node like the ID and the name of the author. And then I can click this play button and we'll see the data being uh, returned to us in the exact shape that we asked for. So that's like a super quick intro. Uh, you can go to wpgraphql.com to get more information on GraphQL if you're, if you're not familiar with it. But that's the gist of how it works. You can query for uh, anything native to WordPress pretty much. You can query posts, pages, categories, users, plugins, themes, options, uh, all sorts of different things that uh, make WordPress WordPress. You can get uh, as data. And so now you can use it. You could use this in PHP or you could use it in the more common use cases in headless apps, right? JavaScript front ends, getting data out of WordPress. Um, but however you want to use WordPress data, you can use this as a, as a way to get your data. Um, so that, that's a quick intro. So next I want to show how we can, uh, use ACF to modify the GraphQL schema. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to go to plugins and we're going to activate i have advanced custom fields pro this does work with free um as well uh wp graphql for acf works with uh, advanced custom fields free but i'm going to show stuff with pro uh so i have uh acf pro active and then i'm going to activate uh this bridge plugin called wp graphql acf so we're going to activate that as well and then we're going to take a look at what happened to our schema um so nothing really is going to be different yet. Um, we should be able to, yeah. So nothing is going to be different quite yet until we create some field groups that show in the schema. So what I'm going to do, we're going to come into ACF and we're going to create a field group. If you use JSON or PHP to register your ACF field groups, this, this will work as well. You'll just have to uh, add a couple values to your field group uh, registrations. Um, but I'm going to demonstrate with the UI. So we're going to create a field group. We just call this like test field group. Obviously name this whatever makes sense for your project. Um, uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll just add some fields to this. I'm not going to do anything like super fancy here. We're just going to call this something creative like text field. Right. Um, so we're going to have a text field and we will assign this to our post type post. And then we'll see here in the settings pane we have this new graph GraphQL tab. So we can click over here and we can decide whether we want this field group to be exposed to the GraphQL schema or not. Uh, the default is that it will show in the GraphQL schema. And we can see here that it's going to show on the post type in the schema. So that's based off the location rules. If for some reason our like automatic predictions from the location rules to where it should show in the schema doesn't meet your expectations, you can click this and then you can override where you want it to show in the GraphQL schema. Some cases uh, for that would be like if you had, I don't know, uh, your location rule is set to like post is equal to hello world. Okay, well, in the GraphQL schema, we, we have to associate your field group with a type and we don't, we can't necessarily tell uh, certain conditions ahead of time, right? So like uh, if you did something like I don't know, post taxonomy. If you had a rule set like this, for example, we're like, well, uh, we might need to add it in this case, but not in that case. So we're not sure what to do. So we'll let you do that. So some some rules like that might not map to the schema and then you'd have to come in and check, check where you want it to be. So I'm gonna leave it as post type is equal to post. We'll click save here and then we can go back. I'm gonna open up graphical again. And we should, let's see, ACF. So now we can search ACF field group. And what, what this is, this isn't what's called in GraphQL an interface. And an interface is a definition of fields that other types in the graph can share. So if I search ACF field group, we can see any type in the schema now that is an ACF field group. 
And so since we registered test field group and we told it to show in GraphQL, we now have we now see that test field group is an ACF field group in the schema. And if I click into this, we should see that it has our text field. So if I click in, it has text field. So now what I can do, um, what I could do now on the posts here, since we assigned it to posts, we can say, uh, well, I'm gonna click on the node here. We'll click on post. And one thing you'll notice too, is the post type has now this, this new interface. It says with ACF test field group. So since we assigned our field group to this type, it has this interface. This interface shows what fields we can query. So now we can say test field group. So since I'm querying on a post, right, the node is a post, it has this field test field group, and then I can query my text field. Right now, if I click the play button, we'll get a null response, and that's because we haven't added any data. So I could come in here to posts. We could, uh, I'll just add a new post. and add a little bit of content. And then we have our ACF field field group down here in our text field. So I'm gonna creatively put text field value. Uh, and we're gonna publish that, or we could save it as a draft or whatever we wanna do. If it was a draft, we'd have to be authenticated to see it. If it's published, we can see it publicly. So now if I click the play button again, now we see our text field value on our new post. Hello world still has no no value because we didn't add any content to that. So that's a super, super quick intro to how you can now use uh, ACF to create field groups, add it to uh, your location where you want to edit it in the admin and then associate it with the GraphQL schema. So let's, uh, we could take a look at um, maybe a little bit more advanced cases. So, Let's say we did. Let's say we did have a rule where we wanted this field group to show up on post, or let's say maybe uh, where are we at? Oh, not that. Like uh, actually, template template could be a good one. So in this theme, we have a couple templates. We have default template, blank, and blog. So if we associate it with uh, the blank template, and then come over and look at GraphQL, we should if things are working right we'll now see this field type on post or the blank template in the graph. So I should, I can save that and I'll show how this works. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click add new on a page and we'll create blank template page. And so the way this is going to work in the, in the admin, right? Um, let's see. We, if we change our temp, Oh, does it not? Ooh, maybe I don't have that working right. Uh, I guess we'll skip that one. <laughs> I don't see the template picture in, in the admin, so I guess I can't show that. So uh, instead of instead of doing template, uh, let's see. Let's change that to something else. We'll do a taxonomy instead. Uh, where are we at? Taxonomy. So we'll do taxonomy is equal to category, for example. So if we look at the GraphQL settings again, it's going to be now post and category, right? So we're, we're deducing from the location rules where to put it in the graph. And so now if I come to categories and now we see our text field here. So I can say uh, test category. Uh, we'll let it auto create a slug. Add a description and then text value for category. Right. So now I can add the category. So in GraphQL, I, I want to introduce you all to a new concept now called fragments. And this is like a incredibly powerful feature of GraphQL that, in my opinion, separates it from any other type of API like REST or any any other type of API you might be using. So um, if we if we come back, I'm going to come back. Uh, I, actually, I'm going to click uh, Command R to refresh the schema right now um, because we, we just modified some things uh, and I want to see how it's working. So... If we come back to, I'm going to command click posts, or sorry, I'll command click the node, and then I'm going to click here on post. And one thing I want to point out is that when you create a field group and show it in the schema, we have this concept called with ACF and then the name of the field group. And if I if I click on this, I can see any type in the schema 
that has this interface. So this is basically all the locations in the schema that have access to the data from that field group. And since we associated our field group with the post post type and the category taxonomy type, we can now see that category and post are with ACF test field group. And what that means is they all have this field called test field group. So instead of querying it directly on the node, I can introduce this thing called a fragment. And so I can say fragment, and we can we can name this whatever we want. It's kind of a variable naming system. I'm going to be real creative and just call it uh, with ACF test field group. And then we have to specify in GraphQL when this fragment should be applied. And so we're going to use this keyword called on. And then we have to provide a type in the graph that if during resolution, this type comes, we come across this type, it will execute these fields. So we're going to say, we're going to take this. We're actually going to just copy that. And again, this can be whatever you want. I'll just actually leave it that just so you can see. So we have this with ACF field group and it has our field group. So I'm going to copy that, paste that there. And then instead of having it there, we can, uh, we can reference our fragment here. So I'm going to click this prettify button and just format it. So if I execute this again on the post, we'll see our tech, our test field group, right? Since we assigned it to categories, we can now use this fragment on multiple things. And this is a, this is a really cool thing with GraphQL too. I can query multiple resources in a single request where like a rest endpoint, if I wanted post and categories, I would have to hit a post endpoint and a category endpoint. But I can do this in one request. So I could ask for posts, nodes, or sorry, categories, nodes, and then I could do what ID and categories have names and descriptions. And now I can reuse this whatever you want fragment. So if I uh, click play here, we're going to have a list of posts, a list of categories, and they're both going to have the, te the test field group. So when I click execute here, we have our new post that we published with our custom field. Uh, and then we have our new category, our test category that also has that, right? So instead of me having to write this out manually in both things, what I can do in my headless app, which is probably where I'm using this, right? I can create a component that is responsible for doing something with the value of this field. And that component can define the fragment. So the component says, Here's the data I need to be a complete component. And then that component can define this fragment so that if that component ever evolves in the future, like let's say the business decided to add a select field to uh, this field group and that component needed to do something with text field and select field, that component can then just update its fragment and both places that that component is used would now be updated. So let's take a look at how that would work. So I'm going to, in another tab, or I actually have another tab open already. We'll come back to just the WordPress uh, admin, and we'll come to our ACF field group. So let's say we already had this component that rendered our text field, and your manager comes and says, hey, we have this new business need. We really need people to be able to select an option on this field group, and we need our component to show it. Okay, great. I can come into ACF, and we can add something like a select field, right? And let's say uh, we're really good at naming things. So we're going to call this select field. And um, and select fields have choices, right? So we have, uh, we're, we're really good at naming choices too. So we're going to have choice one. And am I doing that right? Is it? Yeah, the pretty names on the right. Uh, and we'll say choice two. Oop. Choice. Too. So now we have some choices. Um, we could give a default value. Um, we can click any of these buttons. We can allow folks to have multiple select or single select, um, whichever you want. And then on each field, we also have some GraphQL options. Uh, you can leave the defaults and things will typically work if you don't touch anything. But occasionally you might find that things aren't working and you might have to come touch some things in here. So first one is show in GraphQL. So you at the 
at the field level, you can hide or show a field. You can update the description for how it shows in the graphical documentation. You can override the name. We take the name and uh, we take the field name and make a GraphQL friendly name. But if you, for whatever reason, want a different name, you can override that here. But anyway, so we have this select field. Um, we have uh, cleverly two choices and we will save that. I want to come back. Unfortunately, I have to do a refresh of the schema when I do this. We're, we'll work on that. We'll have a button that does it for you in a, in a future release. But um, So yeah, what we can do now, we can click on this again. I'm going to hold command and click this. And then we'll come over here, test field group. We'll look at that. So text field group now has our two fields. We have text field and select field. So I can go ahead and ask for the select field. Right now, we added the field, it shows in the schema, I can query it, but again, we didn't add any data. So if I click play, we're gonna get null values, right? Because we there is no data. So I can come back here, I'm gonna refresh this so we get our new field here. I'm gonna choose, we'll do choice two. We'll click update. So new post has text field value and choice two. Now, if I execute again, text field value choice two. So Again, using using fragments, I can break up my queries. Uh, we can query this on categories, we can query it on tags, and then this can live with the component that needs that data. So pretty cool stuff. Um, let's go update our category too, just to make sure things are working there. I do not like full screen. Get out of here. All right. Uh, can you see chat, Jason? There's a, there's a good question about fragment. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, here it is. Okay, so can you talk about Pros cons of using GraphQL versus creating a custom REST endpoint. Okay, and then let's have two resources with ACF fields, but have the same name, but are actually separate fields underneath. Different definitions and field IDs. I use that fragment. Uh, let's see. I have two resources with ACF fields that have the same name. So the the fields have the same name, or the resource has the same name, or uh, oh, you have like two different fields. groups that are okay. Yeah, you yeah okay. We can talk about that in a second. Okay, I think I get that. Let's uh let's come though and let's add some value real quick here, just so we can see. And we'll query that again. So we have our our post has the field data, and then if we come down now, our category also has it right. So that. We could add this anywhere, uh, pretty much anywhere. Like we could add this to menu items. We could add it to taxonomies. We could add it to options pages, which we'll get to in a, in a little bit. Okay, so let's cover this question. Let's say I have two resources with ACF fields that have the same name. So my understanding, if you, and maybe someone on the ACF team can correct me here, but if two fields on the same resource have the same name, isn't there problems in general? Uh, no, so the, I guess the use case here is conditional logic, right? Where you've got a switch that's going to change between two field types. So yeah, you know, it could be URL or icon, and you do a, you know, a toggle to switch between the two, and then it would have the same field name underneath, but show a different field type. Michael, feel free to unmute if you if you want to clarify, because I'm reading that differently. You're talking about two resources like posts with the same name, or but yeah, you know. yeah, that that's. I was kind of thinking about the second one. Um, I'm thinking about like, so let's say posts have, let's say, you know, they say they have test field and that's, you know, maybe a text field on the post, but then on there could be a, a field on categories that has exactly the same name. Um, but maybe that's a, maybe that's a select or a, you know, a drop down or something like that. And so I'm, I'm curious how GraphQL okay. would behave. If I'm yeah, sure. That. Yeah. Okay. So let's see if we can reproduce this. It, it should be fine. So Okay, so we'll leave we'll leave this text field and select field. We'll leave that on our post type. So I'll save that, and then we'll create a new field group. And oh, not new field, uh, new field group. And we'll say another. So you're saying like if I had uh, let's say let's make this a text area, but we'll call it text field, right? Is that what you're saying? Like yeah, exactly. So this is a different type yeah. of field, but or we, we could even make it like really weird, like have a gallery called text field. Let's just do that um, just to be interesting. So we can see here GraphQL, it's it's gonna call it text field here. So this, this should work. We'll assign this post type 
uh, or you were saying you wanted this like on a different type, right? Like, so this could be, let's say on a category, for example. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we have our text field here called text field and our other field group also add text field. So if we come back to categories, let's go add like an image. So we now have our gallery. I don't know if I had, uh, let's see. We're just gonna upload some random image actually showing off, I think features from this. Cool. So we have our image here. So now, now if we go back to GraphQL, oh, let's see. So if we look in the schema again, so if we do ACF field group, now we're gonna see we have test field group and another test field group or another test group, right? So I can click another test group and that has text field, which we see is a connection to media items. And then we have test field group, which is a text field, which is a string. So let's do, and then you're, you're gonna see actually the ID, the IDE, since we removed the field group from category, our first field group, you're gonna see this is no longer valid, right? Um, so we'd have to have a different way of querying our new field group. And so we could say another, or what did we call it? Uh, let's see, category, what was it called on here? Another test group. Another test group. And then we can query for, what was it, text field? Yeah, text field, which is poorly named, but there's going to be a, a connection to media items. So we can query like, I always like to query this field called type name, IDE, and then we can do like media item URL. And so we can query that now. And we see we have text field with text value. And then we have text field with our media items. So is it, if if you did, I, and maybe, maybe my understanding of this was wrong, but my understanding is if I had this field with the name text field, assigned a post and then I came in and let's say added my other uh, ACF field group, another test group. If I, oh, not inactive. What did I click? Um, if I, if I added this to post type equals post as well, my understanding is that would be problematic, right? Yeah. Cause you would be editing when you edit the post, you would have two inputs from two different field groups with the same name and you add the first one as A and the second one as B, yeah. the B will overwrite and B will be the one that you change. But if you've if you've got some sort of toggle, as Liam said, or you are using the two different field groups across different objects, so they'll never be rendered on the same edit screen, then you're good. Okay. So that I guess if that is your situation, it there might be edge cases where it isn't working. But I think that's going to be the case in normal. WordPress too, so or normal, yeah, non GraphQL. But if you do run into that and it feels like a really valid case and it's not working, then open an issue and we can look into it further or or provide you know alternatives or whatever. That's also where uh, you could potentially have uh, your GraphQL field names be different too. If that was a conflict, which sometimes can happen, you could potentially you know change the name, even if your ACF name was the same, you might get away with uh, being able to change the GraphQL field name. If that is your case, uh, like I said, open up an issue if you are running into stuff, if you can provide like an export of your fields, even better. And then we can reproduce it and see what's up, provide suggestions if it's not something we can fix. Um, but yeah, it should work. Jason, um, do you want to take a pause and circle to Matt's question in chat? Because I think that's probably quite a good yeah, uh, sure. ex so, extra bit of an overview of why GraphQL versus other things. Yeah, so can you talk about pros and cons of using GraphQL versus creating a custom REST endpoint? Um, yeah, so in GraphQL, it's a it's a type-based system, right? So you can define a type, for example, post, and then you can use that type in many different places. And so like the, the effort involved in maintaining custom REST endpoints, in my opinion, is a lot more difficult, a lot more work over time. It might be easier like initially, but over time, it's a lot more difficult, um, especially if you have multiple clients uh, that have different needs, right? Um, with GraphQL, the client gets to express what they want and they get to pluck it out of the graph, right? And so they get to specify exactly what they want. If you have multiple clients that have different needs and you're building REST endpoints for each client's needs, 
then that becomes a pretty big maintenance burden for whoever is maintaining the endpoints. And if, let's say, both client applications were consuming the same endpoint because they have the same needs, if client B asks for a feature that client A doesn't need, you either have to build a new endpoint just for client B to differentiate from client A, or you start adding features that both clients are getting, but now you're sending unnecessary data to a client who doesn't need it, um, which could potentially cause bugs for them if they're getting stuff that they're not expecting. So things like that. Um, where GraphQL, you say, here's what a post is, and then here's all the places in the graph I want to expose posts. I want, and we can like we can kind of visualize that. So if we search for posts, for example, there's a lot of places posts are used, right? So we have we have uh, the post type, which defines all of the fields that a post can have, but it can be queried from the root. We can query a list of posts. We can query posts related to a category. We could query user uh, posts authored by a user. We could query posts associated with tags. So there's all sorts of ways to query these posts. And so we can define one type. This is what a post is. And then we can register a field wherever we want and say, here's how you access a post or a list of posts. And so in my opinion, it's a lot easier. Uh, I'm biased, of course, but it is a lot easier in my opinion to define what a thing is, to give it the shape of what it is, an object type in the graph. And then you can use that in multiple places in the graph. And then the client has the flexibility of asking for what they want instead of you the server administrator defining what they get, right? They get to ask for what they want and have a little bit more flexibility. So that's my take on it. I think I have an article on wpgraphql.com that talks more about GraphQL versus REST. So you can read more of my thoughts there as well. Um, all right, where are we at? We got what, 15 minutes, 12 minutes. Um, are there major differences with setting this up to work flex content? Or groups, that's cool. We can look at uh, we can look at subfields. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at flex fields real quick. So if we take a look at, we'll add a flexible content field, um, and we'll call this uh, really good at this naming game, flexible content. Cool. So flexible content, flexible content have layouts. If you're not familiar with flexible content, it's like kind of in my eyes, it's like precursor to Gutenberg. It's like a drag and drop kind of block based or layout based uh, module system. So we'll call this uh, layout one and layout one can have fields. So we'll call this text field again. Cool. So this field, uh, this layout will have a text field and then we'll add another layout and we'll call this uh, layout two. And we'll give this one like a media, like an image field, for example. Image field, we'll call this cleverly. Oh, what did I, I clicked, I must have clicked enter. My bad, uh, we'll label that one. Image field, make sure, yep, image field. All right, so we'll save those changes. So this this flex field is now gonna show up on our category. So if we go edit our category, so now we have our text field and our flex content field. So flex content, we could add either layout one with a text value for layout one. And then we could add another row, layout two. This one's gonna have an image, right? Uh, and yeah, that should be good. Well, let's just add, we'll add another row just uh, to show. Well, yeah, so we'll do that. So we'll add category, I need to give it a name. We'll say flex category. All right, so we added our new category. If we edit it, we should see all that data, right? Yep, there we go. So if we come back to uh, GraphQL, all right, I'm gonna get rid of the post query for now. We already looked at fragments. Well, we can look at fragments again actually here too. So we have our another test group. And if we look in here, uh, we now have text field, which uh, <laughs> is a gallery, because in that case, we were poor at naming things. Um, and, and then we have our flexible content field and flexible content field is going to return these uh, square braces. That means a list of in GraphQL. So flexible content is going to return a list of another text group, flexible content layouts. And if we click on this, 
this is the uh, GraphQL interfaces in play again. We see we have two types in the graph that implement this layout. We have our layout one and our layout two, and they're very explicitly named for where they belong. So another test group flexible content layout two and another test group flexible content layout one. So we couldn't just call it layout one or layout two because that would that could easily conflict with other things in the graph. So how we could query this, we can say flexible content. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna query this underscore underscore type name field. And if we click execute, we're gonna see we have text field. Oh, did we not have a value for a text field? Let me uh, let me go. Oh yeah, we needed to add a gallery. Let's uh, let's do that just so we can see it's working. So we'll go to post categories, come into our flex test and we'll add to our gallery called text field. We'll add an item just so we can see it's working. Cool. So if I click execute again, our text field with gallery items has the content and our flexible content, all we asked for right now was the type name. And so we can see uh, we have layout one, layout two and layout one again. And so to use to get data from this, we use fragments again. And we can use fragments either in line here or we can define them like on the side like this and then reference them. So I'm gonna define it in line for now. So we'll, we can say on and then the name of the type. And then it, I'm gonna command click again to see what is available here. And we have text field. So layout one has text field. And then we can say, I'm gonna copy that and we'll change that to layout two. And we'll say layout two, if I command click again, I can see layout two has an image field. And we'll see image field is a connection. So it has a field called node and the node is a media item and media items have things like ID and media item URL, oh, media uh, item URL. So if I prettify that, oh, I'm missing, I think I'm missing a brace, there we go. Cool, so now I should be able to query this. And so now we have our text field, which is gallery, our flexible content, each layout has its own type of data. I can, def I can define that with fragment. So in practice, what I would probably do personally, I would have a component for each of these layouts, right? And I would say fragment, like component, layout two, right? And that component would define this fragment. And then in my parent component that is responsible for rendering the list of flex fields, I would import this fragment and then use it in that query. So now I can execute the same thing. I get the same data, but now I'm allowed to kind of separate that this component that's responsible for the image field will define the fragment that it needs. If we decide later that that component needs the alt text, for example, we can modify just that component and that fragment, and then the app will get the alt text, for example. So that's how it works in flex fields. Um, let's take a quick look at options pages real quick. So in um, in ACF, we have options pages and in, is it 6.2 or one of the recent releases, we got this options page UI, right? Yeah, that was and a so, one. Just before you go on to okay, that, Jason, so, quick question yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. in the chat about blocks. I said we should probably just do a, sec a second session dedicated to blocks, but basically the functionality is similar to, to the layouts and flexible content, right? Yeah, yeah. And we can, I can try and show that super quick. I know we're, we got what, five minutes? Okay. So we'll say, all right, so we're going to create an options page. And so if you're using WP GraphQL ACF, you have this GraphQL tab. So what I did really quick, I created a page called test options page and then cleverly named it test options page again in the GraphQL schema. So now we have a test options page. It has no fields though. So we'd have to add a field group. So I'm just going to come and I'm going to add our existing one that has the text field and flexible content. So I'm going to say it's equal to category or equal to options page, test options page. And then GraphQL, we can quickly check to see if it works. So it's a category and test options page. So that's working as expected. So now we can go to our test options page and I'm not, I'll just, uh, let's just really quick, I'll just add one thing to this field just so we can see. Now, if we come back to GraphQL, <clears throat> we should be able to search test options page. 
and we'll see test options page has oh i might have oh yeah and then it has the another test group yeah cool so now we can query we can say test options page and i'm going to command click again to see what's available here so we have these fields and the one that we're probably most concerned with is another test group and that had text field which was a gallery oh, so i can query nodes id and then media item url so here's our gallery on our options page we can get our options page like id and uh what is it id menu title things like that as well so we can see our test options page and then we can query our acf field groups from there so uh now i'll real quick i'll introduce you to blocks but yeah i'm totally down to do a more a whole session on just blocks but i'll show it real quick so what i'm going to do i'm going to i'm going to activate advanced custom fields extended and then wp graphql content blocks so WP GraphQL Content Blocks is a plugin from WP Engine that adds support for querying blocks. Um, I, I, ideally, this will be part of WP GraphQL Core one day, but for now, we're iterating on it as its own plugin. And then ACF Extended, the reason I added that for now is that it gives us the ability to register block types also from the UI. So I'm going to create a new block. We'll call this uh, Test Block or ACF Test Block, just to be sure. So ACF uh, test block. Cool. So this block, and we'll we'll just leave it to show anywhere. So we'll update that, and then we can come back to our field group here. I'm going to do our test field group that had a text and select, and I'm going to add that to block type, where block is equal to ACF test block. Save those changes. Now we'll come in and add a post, test ACF blocks. So we can come in, we can see our ACF block now. Uh, we did not define a render callback, so it's gonna be blank right now, but we can edit it. So we can give it a text field, so we could say block text value, and that make that multiple choice I did, so I'm gonna select both of those. We're gonna publish this, I'm going to take this ID, ID 23. We'll come back to graphical. And we'll say post. So I'm going to show you how we can query a post by ID. We'll say ID 23. And then I have to tell it what type of ID we're using. So I'm using a database ID. So just making sure that's working. Cool. We're getting the correct one. So if I click into post, um, this now, now that I added, um, WP GraphQL content blocks, it has an interface called node with editor blocks. And so we can see that we can query a field called editor blocks now. And it is going to return a list of blocks and blocks can be any of these type of blocks. So we have like our core posts, our core image, our core author, core query, all these, all these different blocks. And then somewhere in here should be our ACF, yeah, our ACF, uh, I guess I named it ACF twice but we have our ACF test block. So you'll see ACF test block. Cool, so I can click into that and we can see all the fields that are available to this block. And that one should have our test field group. So I can say with a fragment again, I would say on. So if we get to a block that is that type, then I can specify what I want for that type of block. And so we could say test field group. And what do we add? We had a text field and a select field. So now I can query this post and I can get the a list of blocks and the ACF field groups of those blocks. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so let's real quick, I'll just add another block, maybe two blocks around it real quick, just so you can see. So we'll add like a paragraph above it. Uh, paragraph one. And you gotta add another paragraph, another paragraph. Right, so what we should have now, if we query, we'll get a list of blocks. One's a paragraph, one's our ACF block, another one's a paragraph. So I can execute this again. We see we have paragraph, our block, other paragraph, and then we can specify on core paragraph. What do we want? Like inner HT or what is it? Uh, I think it's attributes inner HT. I don't remember what it is. Um, rendered HTML. There we go. We'll do that. 
we'll start with that. So I can get my rendered HTML for our paragraph. I could get whatever data I want for our test block and then our rendered HTML for this again. So that's that's a quick intro to ACF block. So yeah, all this all this stuff works. I was gonna show clone fields, I'm out of time. Um, clone fields are really cool though. You can use uh, fragments, each field group gets a fragment. And if you clone a field group onto another field group, you can just use that fragment across the graph. And it's uh, it's really cool if you're familiar with clone fields. But I think we're at time. So I can keep going if people have questions, but if you need to hop off, you can hop off. Yeah, thanks, Jason. I think somebody, John just asked a question, but I think it's more ACF related. I think Liam's taking care of that in the chat. Um, but yeah, I, that was a really good demo. Um, you did cover a lot there. That was super good. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're happy to stick around a little bit longer if there's any follow-up questions or anything we want to close out with um, or anything you want to mention that you hadn't done before. Um, just a quick question I had, Jason, yeah. and it was more on the topic of GraphQL versus REST. And when you look, when you were showing in the right hand side of the graphical where you show where post is is available in loads of different places is that is that when I mean, you talk about the graph is that just the kind of inherent difference between rest api and graph so graphql in rest api you have a bunch of endpoints that have to be designed and they are like prescribed go and get this data uh, whereas the graph is it kind of it has everything there and it's it's available to choose from. Have, have I explained that well, or am I yeah. not getting it? So, so GraphQL, but by default, GraphQL, yeah, it you have to ask for what you want. There is no way to just get everything. For example, so you have you do have to ask for what you want. So that's one thing. One difference is you hit an endpoint in REST, and you get whatever the server tells you you're going to get. Where Obviously, there are endpoints where that support like query parameters and stuff, and you can use that to whittle down to some degree. Um, but for the most part, the server is in control of a REST endpoint, and the client has more control with the GraphQL schema. Um, so that that's a big difference. And then as far as how a GraphQL schema is designed, though, that's up to the implementer of the GraphQL schema. You could have a GraphQL schema that is as simple as one field, hello, that returns a string world. You know, you could have like a very basic hello world GraphQL API, and that's your entire API, right? So there's nothing in GraphQL inherently that says like, oh, I'm going to turn your data source into like a graph where you can uniquely access nodes and things like that. So that came from, there's a concept called the relay specification for GraphQL, and they have some principles for how to design a GraphQL schema, and we follow those principles. So it's a, for things like pagination, um, like when you saw me query a list of posts, you'll see this often in GraphQL, but it's not, GraphQL itself doesn't enforce it. But for, for things like posts, like I can query, um, let's say first, I, we have two posts, right? We have our hello world post and then we add another post that we created. So I can query things like page info and we could see, uh, whether there's another page of information. And if so, we know that we can ask for more information. Um, so the these kind of principles for like how to solve pagination, how to identify nodes with like a global ID, those all come from the relay specification. And so you'll see it like the GitHub GraphQL schema uses it. We use it. Gatsby used it. A lot of a lot of GraphQL implementations use it. So a lot of people think it's part of GraphQL, but it's it's a specification a lot of GraphQL APIs adhere to. But yeah, so a cool thing with nodes though, actually, well, I got you just to show how that works. We can take any ID for a node and no matter what type the ID is, we can get the data back. So this is a, oops, speaking of the graph concept, right? So I can take an ID of a post and I can pass it to this nodes field and we'll get that post. Um, if I query for categories, oh, come on, nodes, ID, and we'll take one of these. I can also pass it here, and we'll see that we get the category. 
And so then I can use fragments like on post, or actually we could say on with ACF, another test field group. And what did we have here? We had our text field, which was gallery. So we can do stuff like this and we can say, ah, if I'm given an ID to a category and it turns out that that category supports this field group, I want those fields. If I take an ID to a post, I can't remember if our posts support that or not, but I can pass that ID and if it supports it, I'll get it. If, if it doesn't support it, I don't get it, right? So it's a, it's pretty cool. We can, we can access any node like globally from the graph. And presumably it's then less requests, right? Cause you're getting everything you need in one go rather than having to call like 10 different endpoints and be pointed around to categories. And yeah. All that. Yeah. And, and because of fragments, I think this is where the real magic is honestly is fragments in my opinion, because when you're building complicated systems, right you you break your system up into smaller parts so in like modern front end dev that would be components right and so like instead of a rest normally when you hit a rest endpoint it's like okay for this whole page i need all of this data and then i have to figure out how to get that data from the initial request down to the template component and then the header component and the footer component and the sidebar component and the content component and the author component you know like i have to figure out how to how all these components can get all the data they need from a single request. And with fragments, I can write my component and I can write my fragment in the component that says, ah, I'm building an author bio box. I need the author's avatar, their name and their bio, right? And I could build that component and then I can import that component and the fragment into the parent component, which would be handling probably the template, right? And that template could import other components like the sidebar and the navigation or whatever. And each of those components could define their parts of the graph that they need data from. And then you end up with a pretty small, you would end up with a pretty small like root template that would just have like, you know, component one, component two. It would, it, you know, it would kind of end up looking something like that, but each component would define what they need. So to me, that's, in my opinion, if I don't pick one differentiating feature between GraphQL and REST, it's fragments. So, but there's there's a lot. Awesome. That's great. Thanks, Jason. Um, right. Well, yeah, we are over time, but I think that was very worth um, having a little bit more of Jason's time. So, I just want to thank you for coming, Jason, and um, imparting all of your GraphQL knowledge on us. That's been really helpful. And thanks, everyone, for coming along. Um, we'll be back in a couple of weeks, probably have an, uh, more of an open session again. Um, so, yeah, we'll see you next time and have a lovely weekend. Thanks. Bye. Bye, everyone.